everyone, it is Susie, and I hope everybody is doing well. Uh, I am doing my little uh, beginner journal using my Creative Studio, uh, what I got out of the June box. Uh, and if you want to see what was in the June box, you can go um, and check that video out. I do have that up. But um, I wanted to do a bigger project this time, and I've been wanting to do a, beginning, a beginner's journal for quite some time. Something that's just easy, and, uh, you know, something that, uh, when you're starting out, you need something really simple. And so that's kind of what I wanted to do, is just make something simple. So I'm just going to show you some of the basic things that I gather up um, before I start a journal or when I'm getting ready to start a journal. I will just gather a few things up. Now I always end up using, not using everything or have to find other things because I've decided uh, that I've kind of wanted to use, you know, something and uh, so uh, something other than what I have on my table. So I always have a little uh, box of just... Um, scrappy stuff, you know, just uh, odds and ends, and then I get my images. Now, I'm going to be using images. I'm not going to be using um, scrapbook uh, paper or um, or like your little uh, tags, you know, that you get out of your um, scrapbook paper pads, but they are ideal, and I've used them many, many times in the past, so... Uh, just get you a uh, sheet of tags, like if you have your scrapbook paper, just uh, get you a sheet of tags or a couple of sheets of tags. Uh, what I'm going to do is I will cut these out before I ever start. Before I ever start my project, I will have these cut out. So I'm going to cut those out before I start anything. And I will cut all my papers down to the sizes that I need. But I just am going to get some random papers. Now, I usually generally put 13 sheets or uh, 13 pieces of uh, paper to a journal. That gives you 26 pages and then 52 sides, you know, if you're counting every side that you're turning. So, but 13 generally, 10 to 13 is a basic, I think a basic um, a good start to uh, for a journal to have your pages for a journal. Uh, I'll grab some random tags here. I grab some of these little stickers. But here's my papers. I've grabbed you know like a couple music sheets. It's just I tore out of a a book. Um, I think it was an old um, atlas. Uh, great places to find your your. Uh, music uh, sheets uh, uh, or your hymnals or things like that a lot of times the, your library will have a book sale and that's where I pick up a lot of um, things especially the second day that they have it and everything is a quarter usually by the end of the day after a certain time it's a great time to pick up or fill a bag for a dollar and so those are that's a great resource for uh, music, uh, old books, uh, any kind of books. Uh, if you want books with um, images in them, that's a good place to go. Garage sales are really good too. Uh, here is just some stained paper. Here's some stained graph paper. And then I've just got some random, random sheets of paper here that I will be uh, putting together for a journal. And then I grabbed a couple of pieces of craft cardstock. I'm going to make a a traveler's notebook, but this paper is a little shy, I think, of what I want. I believe a traveler's notebook is usually about a four and a fourth to four and a half by eight and a fourth, eight and a half, somewhere in that general area. So uh, I grabbed two pieces of paper. Uh, this is a textured cardstock that I'll be making the covers out of. I also grabbed just some fabric because I will. I know I will be using some fabric on mine, and I'll probably have to stain this fabric. And then I grabbed a file folder because I will be making some tags out of this file folder. Um, 
I love Dollar Trees. Now this is not a Dollar Tree. It's a little thicker, but I love Dollar Trees uh, file folders. They are just the right color. I love the color of them, and they're just the right uh, thickness for a uh, tag. So, but this here is a little thicker, but I'm still going to be making some tags, and I'll show you how to do that. And then I've just got my bits and pieces here from uh, the June subscription box. And I probably won't use all of this, but I am going to certainly use um, some of this. So um, I think I'll be putting the bookmark in for sure. Um, I'll be trying out the glue stick. And I'm even going to incorporate some of the tissue paper she had in the box this time. Um, I do believe so anyway that's just oh and I grabbed some just old uh, bits and pieces there's some cheesecloth I've stained just some lace bits um, there just grab some random random laces because I know that I'll be putting some laces in mine okay so but I'm going to try to keep it simple and try to keep it where um, it is not a lot of work so that's kind of where I'm going on this. All right, so I'm going to lay my mat down. I know I got a glare over there from the window, but I'm going to get my mat laid down. I am going to go ahead and cut out my images. Um, I will get my papers kind of sorted how I want them, and then I'll sh actually show you how I cut them um, to make them all even and not have that waterfall effect because your inner ones always are are longer than your outer paper so and I'll show you an easy way to kind of do that but anyway let me get all set up and I'll be right back okay so I got um, all of my little uh, pieces cut out here my images so they'll be ready um, and then I have pulled out, of course, these, because I will be using these in the, uh, in the journal, probably for some collages. And I will be using my crinkly paper just as some back, backing for some collages. So um, the first thing I want to do is show you how I construct the um, journal, and then I'm going to cut some tags. And I also pulled out a couple of envelopes because what I'd like to do is just make my embellishments and then put them in the journal. So um, I grabbed me a couple of envelopes to use there for that so I can just kind of embellish them. So um, what I've done is I've just put the papers kind of how I want them. Whoops, it's going to open this way because I'm going to cut this down. Um, but I have put them how I kind of want them to turn as I'm opening the journal. So I'm just, I've just got it, and I'm going to have my little music sheet a little smaller. There, of course, that will be cut down, so. And, uh, oops, I think I'm going to, I always check these. I think I'm going to put this uh, back here to kind of break up a little bit of that. Yeah. Okay. So it just kind of lets you see how you how you'll open your uh, when your journal opens how it will okay how it will look. So what I do and I ended up only putting I think ten in here because it was getting too thick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, nine, ten. I've got 11, but I'm actually, I think really all I want is 10, and I may get a bag to put in here as well. So, um, yeah, let's, uh, let's make it 10 sheets there, because it's pretty thick with 10. I think just because my paper is, uh, feels, you know, kind of uh, thicker where it's been coffee dyed. So let me get a bag. I know I want to put a bag in here. I got me a bag. This is just one of those um, large glass seam bags from the shop, and it will be just about the right size. So what I'm going to do is just cut a little bit off the end so that it has an opening um, there. 
so. Okay. Yeah. All right, and some of it may end up getting cut off, um, but I'm just going to place it, you know, kind of in there. Um, let's see here. I think... I think I'm going to put that bag right in between there. So, okay. All right. So then once I get the pages kind of all down at the bottom, I'm going to take it and I'm just going to fold them in half. And this will actually is eight and a half, and then I'll cut this down to four and a half going um, to the side. But you can kind of see how your pages stagger out be when it's folded. That just happens. It just does um, because your inner ones are are just uh, pushed a little farther out in the fold. This here didn't quite fold center, but I want it to be more centered, so I'm just going to go ahead and fold that in half. And it looks like it may have to have a little washi tape uh, before I bind it. Okay. So there we are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my paper. Um, I'm actually going to leave this. I believe it was eight and a half. If I can find my ruler. Okay. Yeah, because it's eight and a half by eleven piece of paper. Yeah. Okay, so really all I want to do is I'm going to take this out and I'm just going to cut it eight and a half. So let's just do that and I won't have to try to trim that off. So we're just going to cut it off at eight and a half. And then it will be the right. Let's see here. I want to make sure I'm going up and down. Okay. All right, so there's our eight and a half. Okay, so what I do to get the staggers out is I just take a few papers, not all, and what I'll do is I'll just cut. I'll just take the trimmer. If you get too many papers, you'll you'll end up in trouble because it won't cut through, and then you'll have a hard time getting uh, getting your your papers cut so I just cut a few and then I take these and I stick them on the inside and you know you can kind of see then what's sticking out you just want to take your pencil and kind of mark then I take that group and I just set it folded in the in my uh, trimmer and I just cut it off And then my pages are all the same length. And I've just found that just the easiest way to do it. It just makes them all nice and uh, perfect. But you know what I did? I didn't even measure that four and a half. So let me take it four and a half. Okay, because I want to make it a traveler's. I'm making it a traveler, so I'll have to just take those pieces out again. Just take so many. And let's just cut them at four and a half. Okay. Then we're going to just put it back in there and do the same thing we did last go round. Just kind of mark it a little bit so that you can take it, put it in the cutter. There's a trimmer here. Okay. And just cut it. Okay, I'm going to have to... I didn't cut it all the way through, which is okay. Just set it in there. And we'll finish cutting. Okay. And then if you have a little 
part that stuck, just grab your scissors and just cut it off. All right, so that will be our um, our book then, and all our pages are nice and and uh, the same the same uh, on the ends, so we don't have that little waterfall effect. Okay, so while I have my trimmer up here, I'm going to go ahead and cut the tags for my for my journal. So I went ahead and just cut I cut the top off you know where where your where your ends are I just cut that off and then I cut it right in the fold um, I won't be using this piece here I don't want to use those uh, ridges there I'm gonna set my book part over for right now and what we will do is we will get the cover fix and you know what I'm, I'm gonna be able to use one since I went sideways with it I don't know what I was thinking. I was going to be taller than that. Yeah, I'll only need one piece of paper, so um, that'll be good. That'll be good. But I will do the cover last. We'll just set this over, uh, put it aside, and go ahead and start working on some of the embellishments. So let's just set that over. All right, so my tags, I want them to be about a three and a half. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut my file folder about three and a half. Um, this one's not going to make three and a half because of that ridge. So these I'm going to cut down to three. So I'll kind of have two different sizes. I'm going to go three by about, mm, let's go five and three quarters. And if you want to know the standard size of a... Uh, of a tag, just Google it. It'll give you a a size. So let's see. I went five and three quarters, and I'm gonna go five and three quarters. And I think actually, well, I'm trying to think, they might look awful big. I think I'm gonna cut them down to three <coughs> as well. I think I just like the width of a three, so because the journal is a little more slender um, than most of them that I do. Usually they're about five or so wide, so I'm going to cut that down to about three, and I'm going to go ahead and do these as well. We're going to go cut it three. Making your own tags is really easy. And like I said, the Dollar Tree, they have the best um, file folders, I think, to use for uh, tags. They're just, they're just nice. They're just a nice thickness and, and everything. I just, I just really like the Dollar Tree file folders. Now they're not so good for altering file folders. I think they're a little thin for that, but for tags they work wonderful. Okay, so there's our tags. And what I'm what I'm going to do for the ends is I think I'm going to Just do this, and you can get them right every time if you will do this. Just draw it and then flip your little, flip the one little piece you cut, and your, your things are usually the same size that way. So just uh, line it up on the side, and then just flip it. Make sure you're lined up. And then just cut them. And then you'll have the same uh, on both sides. You can cut for the longest time on a tag and never get the two sides the same. I don't know how many times I've done that. Okay. All right, and then if you just grab you an eraser, you, I'll just clean that off. All right, and I've got two more tags or three more here. I'll, I probably won't use that many tags, 
but we can go ahead and and just get them ready. Now I have a crocodile, but I don't know that I'm even going to put a hole in these. I'm not sure. Um, I may just put a hole in some of them and uh, not in all of them. Okay, and if we want to find the center, the easiest way to find center for me is just grab, grab a scrap. Now you can eyeball it, you can measure it, but if you just want to be kind of uh, precise, then here is what I do. I just fold this in half. Get you a little place to mark your center. And I'm going to drop my hole down a little bit. And just kind of Kind of mark that center. All right, I have the cup of dial here. And I'm just going to put a hole and I'm going to use the um, I'm going to use the the bigger the bigger um, hole there. All right, and I think I'm just going to cut it in three because I'm not going to cut it in all of them. So, all right. So there's our tags. We've got them cut. Clean up my mess here. Okay, so I want to start working just on a few um, embellishments. So I'm going to grab... Let's see, I'm going to grab a couple of tags. Let's do two with the holes punched and two without. And let's just go ahead and start. Uh, let's see, I'm probably going to distress a little. Not a lot. I'm not going to make it a heavy distress. I really like distress. Okay, so let's go ahead and get, get some of these tags made. Alright, so I'm going to use some bits like that there where I cut off the, uh, the um, uh, music sheet. And let's see, I may want to use... Some of these. I'm going to grab a couple of those out. See, I'm looking for that one color, but I don't think I have a round one in that peachy looking tan color. Now these will just kind of be transparent, I think, once I peel the back off of that. And I want an image. I will cut a piece of that and add it. And I think maybe I want... I think I'm going to keep it pretty simple and just do a really slight collage and then add, I'm not sure, a ribbon of some sort right there. Let's go ahead and distress this just a little. Okay. And because I do love to sew, I will probably end up sewing on um, some of these pieces like this. But, I mean, 
that's that's not a necessary thing it's just I enjoy stitching so okay so I kind of like that so I'm going to go ahead and I don't pick stuff up I want to just kind of keep it where it was so it doesn't move on me okay and once I get that kind of stuck down and I'm going to go ahead I think I want this tipped up a little more on the music sheet there going for something that just kind of looks like that so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to have to let me kind of mark where I had this because I'm literally going to have to pick it up to to uh, be able to get it the backing off okay so I'm going to kind of just mark where I had this okay let's get this backing off of here there we go. Alright. So I can kind of see where I where I had it. Uh oh. Yeah, it's not exactly where I had it because I couldn't get it moved. Okay. Alright. That will work. All right, so we've got that, and then we're going to go ahead and put this like right here. So let's go ahead and get this stuck down. All right. Alright, so I will end up stitching that down and I think I'm actually going to add me a little word somewhere here. So I'm going to cut that down a little. And I'm going to ink this so it's not quite so white. Normally I just print everything on uh, tea stained paper, but because I, um, these were some new uh, digitals I was working on for the shop, I uh, printed them on my um, premium, I used premium uh, uh, color paper for, uh, For the download so that I can see exactly what they look like. Let's see, I'm not liking that there, so maybe I'll just come down with it. Yeah, well, I'm not liking, I'm going to have to stitch. Okay, so I'm not liking that. All right, so I'm going to stitch on that here in a little bit. But there's one tag. Then I'm going to work on, let's see, that one had a hole. Let's work one without the, the hole. And I do have some of these doilies here that came in the, came in the, uh, let's see. I may want to let's just rip that a little bit. I'm just gonna rip it. Having that torn look is fine with me. And I'm gonna actually at that. Yeah. 
All right, so I think I'm going to go ahead and stick that down, and all I'll do is just put an image on this one. Okay. All right, and then I'll just kind of run some glue. Stuck down on the back side. Okay. All right, and all we want to do is just find us an image. Um, I really want one that's kind of going portrait and not landscape. Well, that one would work. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to cut that down just a little. Let's go ahead and ink it up. And then I am going to go ahead and stitch around a couple of these tags that I've made so that I can kind of see if I want to add anything else to these. Alright, so I've got those stitched around and I think I'm going to go ahead and put my little date, but I think I'm going to put it going um, up and down there is what I think I do. I'm going to do. I'm going to use this. I'm going to try out this glue stick. Find me a little scrap here to to glue on. We'll see how that glue stick works. It's a really nice, uh, nice looking glue stick. A nice container, I think. It's really sturdy and well, it seems pretty nice. Okay, so we're gonna just. And that will be that tag, and I will try to find, I think I'm going to use something, and I always have tons of scraps, so um, I'm just going to grab something right there out of my scrap trim. And I don't know, I think I'm just going to staple this, I don't think I'm going to tie it, I think I just want to, I like the looks of staples and, and those kind of things, so I'm going to go ahead and just grab my stapler there and I'm just going to staple this on there yes and that looks real nice okay so that's just kind of how I'm going to go with that I really wanted that to be a little diagonal there we go let's try to get some kind of there all right, so that, that tag will work. I really do like how that came out. It's very simple, but yet it, it has enough on it to be eye appealing. So I see a little place I probably ought to glue here that I didn't catch. All right, so there is that one. And then let's work on this other tag. I'm going to set that, I'm going to set that uh, to the side. I, if I, if I don't put it in something, I'll have to get me a little something to put that in. If I don't put it in something, then I get it lost in the, in the mix of everything on the table. So, all right. So I've got my image here, and I was thinking that I would like to use one of these labels here. Oh, they're different. Well, see, I didn't even see that in the, in the box. I've got different uh, borders. Yeah, they got different borders. So let's see, maybe it's not the blue border or that border that I want. Maybe I want to, I think I like this border. Yeah, I like that. I didn't even notice that when I did the unboxing. 
I did it. Notice it had um, a little different. Uh, oops, I grabbed you. Um, I'm going to trim this down just a little because my tag is not too awful wide there, and so I want to just going to trim it down some to make it a little smaller. Okay. Yeah. And then I'm going to ink around that, I think. Well, I don't know if I'm going to ink around it. Yeah. I'll say because I didn't uh, really do anything to the doily. And it would tie in fine with the doily. But let's ink around it a little bit here. Really just to give the edge of the paper a little definition, actually. Okay. And then I think I'm going to put a word in it. Let's see, I think I'm going to use friends. I think that's what I'm going to do, is just use this little... And I'm going to cut it down really small. I really just want the word. And I'm going to stick that right there in that, in that label. And then what I'll do is I will staple or I will sew something right up here is what I will do. So let's let's go ahead and um, whoops, you know what? I may want to just brown that up just a little bit. Just brown it up a hair. Yeah. All right. Okay, and I'm just going to stick that kind of in the center there, and then we'll stick that down right there. Okay. And then we need to find a little something to put at the top of our tag. Well, that would be kind of cute. That's kind of like some fish netting. I found this um, at a thrift shop uh, called Red Racks um, in the city. Um, and it was hanging over by the clothes and stuff. And I'm still not sure what it was supposed to have been. Um, but I, I thought, oh, that would make an interesting um, texture. Uh, for uh, you know putting in the journal so I think I'm gonna have to add a little piece of some kind of lace to that and let's uh, layer it and I think I'm just gonna staple it on too I think that that'll be fun it'll just give it some um, pop to the um, to the tag and I'm just gonna staple it a couple of times and I'll probably add a little bit of glue, but there we are, and there's our tag. How quick and fun is that? And I'm going to leave the back just like it is. I think that will be fine. And uh, anyway, there's there's our second tag. So um, that will give us two tags, and I and I'm I'm going to move on to something else now besides the tags. We'll work on a pockets or something here. I'm going to go ahead and take and I'm going to try to glue down this lace just a little bit to help it to help it hold. I want to add just a little few glue places to it. So Okay, and I may have to put another staple um, in that to hold that knitting. All right, so let's move on to a pocket. Let's make us a pocket. Let's add one more staple here to hold that knitting. 
and it's okay. It doesn't really shine through the um, the front. You'll see it on the back, but you wouldn't the front. So, and we could always cover this if we wanted to um, with a piece of um, coffee dyed paper as well. If we don't want to see those staples, we could do that, and that would work really, really well. Let's go ahead and do that, and we'll cover up those staples. So let's just go ahead and get it even at the top. Okay. I'm just going to cut it around the tag. Okay. All right, and then we have our little back tag there and just a nice place for journaling. But anyway, that's a really cute uh, tag, I think, and it's very, very simple. Okay, so let's let's do something else. Let's make us, um, we might make us a couple of envelopes now. Let's make us a couple of envelopes.